As these image and LIDAR libraries grow, and of course this will be beyond the three projects, three states that we're working with. Other states are obviously doing this. Uh, other entire communities and, and countries across the world are, are doing larger and larger projects and creating large volumes of data, libraries of imagery and LIDAR available for further analysis. And uh, what we've seen is that is that data in the past has been primarily held more at the county or local level with these consortium projects this data is becoming more readily available to the public and to the and to other private vendors who may want to do additional work with it so it's really reaching the public domain much like say census bureau data or postal databases and we think this will just continue to grow obviously with uh, web content as well there's this information is available all over the place the two things we'll talk about uh, primarily in these examples are impervious and pervious feature extraction using definions and then also some applications doing agricultural analysis these are two data sets that, um, especially in Ohio, our clients are extremely interested in. And uh, we found that the software does a great job of being able to provide that to us in a very efficient way. We're going to go through some of the inputs that we're using, uh, demonstrate some of the outputs, and talk a little bit about those the applications of each as we go through here. The next slide is uh, just a red, green, blue color digital ortho photo sample. This is just a suburban area in Ohio. This was an area that we did some testing on because it, it had a good variety of different types of buildings, sidewalks, driveways, uh, and obviously roads, trees, and vegetation. So uh, we've used this to do some of our impervious testing areas like this in order to try and generate the approximate acreages for the impervious runoff area within within this area. The next slide is another one of our inputs, which is a color infrared input. This is one meter data that we collected and uh, false color. These are all being delivered and stored as 24-bit RGB data sets. So they are multispectral, but they don't necessarily carry all the bit range data that's available in the, origi in the original collects, but it is all st still very useful information. To so move on to the next slide, we start getting into some of the LiDAR inputs. This is in raster, simply uh, grayscale coded by elevation. And this is from the reflective surface data set, so we're, we're, we're getting the ground level detail the first return data at the tops of the trees, and then obviously the returns off the buildings. And the next slide is an image data set also from LiDAR. This represents the LiDAR intensity return data from the sensor. So as we collect the LiDAR, we're collecting not only elevation information for each point, but also recording the intensity of the return, and that intensity then can be mapped to a grayscale value and displayed as an image. Uh, in this case, the building's trees are showing up with what are actually higher intensity values. The vegetation, the, the lighter colors are lower intensity values, so it's, it's almost like a reverse composite of the original values. So using those inputs, on the next slide we, uh, we go through the segmentation process with Definian software and come up with some of our, and we're going to display just some of the preliminary uh, segment areas using the LiDAR data. And as you can see, the uh, the buildings are starting to appear. The roadways, obviously, are, are grouping in all the vegetated areas. Uh, what we find when looking at pervious and impervious feature analysis is that you're primarily trying to develop the pervious data set rather than what is impervious. Pervious being ground that will allow water to penetrate, impervious being uh, areas that will force runoff. Uh, the pervious is actually easier to detect, and if, uh, if that's your primary interest, then uh, LiDAR and, and the imagery inputs will do a great job of focusing on just those, those areas. Here's a, a, poly, a field polygon. Again, these are preliminary results that we're posting here um, only because we're still moving along with some of our, our analysis, but even with the uh, first pass, rest, our first set of rules, we were able to get a lot of good information. This next image is a segmentation pass of a commercial area, uh, this being because the impervious, impervious acreage calculations are often uh, primarily focused in commercial areas versus residential areas. Next slide is the same 
area uh, with a color overlay over the original image. Yellow would be the, perv the impervious area calculations overlaid with the image. So as you see, that we're, we're getting all the roadways, most of the buildings, and as far as a total acreage area, we're well within a 10% of the, the total impervious area, and that, that's based on uh, mapping that we had done. The next slide is the same area with the, uh, the building layer extracted, so a set of rules will build, were built up to, to extract just the building section, so that's overlaid. Again, it's doing a nice job pulling out the, the major building areas, and, and again, in a completely automated way. And finally, I think the, the last slide here is just a combination of, of both the buildings and the impervious over the image. So these were all, again, created with, uh, with LiDAR, imagery inputs, uh, a set of rules set up and run in an automated environment. And these outputs, as you see, came directly from the software. And uh, again, I think that as we move ahead, we will continue to refine the process. But uh, we were quite impressed with the results with, with just early simple inputs.